Hey there, this is Kenneth Moore from Zion's Watch and Media. The Bible tells us a story in the book of Genesis chapter 18 about the father of the faithful. That's right, we're talking about Abraham and how during the noonday when three messengers caught his eye in the distance and Abraham, being a godly man of hospitality, though old, arises and hastens to meet them, asking them to rest under a nearby tree while he fetches water for them so that they can wash their feet and has a meal prepared for them. You see, Abraham was a man that had received much from God, and so in turn he gave much. He lived not to please himself, but to bless others. And the story continues with one of the messengers, Jesus, deciding to share his plan with Abraham on dealing with the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Abraham was a man that had found favor with God, and thus he was allowed to receive special insights on his plans, and was brought into his secret councils. And there is a big lesson in this that we need to catch before going any further. If we want to know what's coming, if we want to know God's plans in dealing with this sinful world, then we need to be connected with Jesus through His Word, the Bible. How many people today are blind and confused about the dealings of God in this wicked world because they neglect to study His Word, when if they would just study, they would be prepared? Now is the time when we should be connected with the One who is all-wise and all-knowing, so that when the coming destructions upon this wicked world come, we will not be caught off guard. And in verses 21 to 22, we find out more about this plan, reading. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence, and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Sodom's cup had almost reached its tipping point. The wickedness of that city was so great that it now finds its probation beginning to close. And did you notice that Jesus said that he was going to go down to see if what was being said about Sodom was really true? Because before God ever executes a punishment, there is always an investigative judgment that goes on prior beforehand. And this investigative probationary time of Sodom serves as a symbol of the time of probation that we are now living in. See Revelation 14 verse 7. God is now examining the lives of individuals, just as he was in the days of Sodom. And if this is true, then now is the time when we should be putting away every sin and striving for that perfection of character daily. And Abraham, hearing this news, being moved for the people of Sodom, begins this heartfelt intercessory prayer for them. And although Abraham hates the sins and iniquity that are being practiced in Sodom, he does not hate the individuals and longs to see them saved. The man who once saved them with the sword is now trying to save them through prayer. Abraham prays that if 50 righteous could be found in Sodom, that God would spare it, then down to 45, then to 40, 30, all the way down to 10 individuals, all to which God agrees. If 10 righteous individuals could be found in Sodom, God would spare that wicked city. How much do the wicked of today owe to the prayers of the righteous? And how many cities are still standing solely because of those 10 righteous individuals dwelling in them? The intercession of Abraham is but a faint picture of the character of Christ and his mediation in behalf of the human race in the heavenly temple. Christ is now standing before the Father, pleading for you and for me that we will accept his salvation before the close of probation, but soon this work will be complete. Now is the time when we must accept his salvation by faith. And this work of intercession that Christ is doing right now is the same work that he is calling you and me to do for this wicked world today, just like Abraham did for the people of Sodom. Who is going to be the one who stirs themselves up to pray for the Sodomites of today? Who is going to be the one who pleads long and continuously with God for those who are rejecting His law? Probation is closing on people all around us every day, and who knows how many might be going down into Christless graves. The salvation of some is hanging in the balance and might depend on your prayers. We are now living in the final hours of Earth's history, and millions are unaware of the coming climax that is about to fall upon this earth like an overwhelming surprise. We must make it our duty, like Abraham, to pray for these individuals, that they will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they will be saved, before the close of probation comes, when it will be too late. So I hope that we will all, like Abraham, start praying for the sodomites of this world today. And as always, until next time.